Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the class. Today we are going to discuss about Kingdom Protista. Basically, Kingdom Protista includes what kind of organism? It includes your unicellular eukaryotic organism. Unicellular eukaryotic organism right so what is unicellular basically it is made up of unicellular is basically single cell eukaryotic is your having true nucleus right so this kind of organism it includes kingdom protista coming these are the some examples of uh, organisms which belongs to kingdom protista this is you see amoeba this is paramecium. This is euglena, right? So these are basically some of the common features which are present, a common organisms which are present on the kingdom protista. Coming to your characteristics, what basically are uh, are organisms that are present on the kingdom protista? So protista are basically include simple eukaryotic organisms that are neither plants nor animals or fungi. So it includes those organisms which cannot be placed under plants, which are neither plants nor animals or fungi. Right? So protista are basically unicellular in nature. Unicellular that means your single cell in nature most proteas live in water so protista mostly lives in water terrestrial environment or even as parasites so the habitat if i ask you what is the habitat of the protista they may live in water as well as on the soil or they can also survive as a parasite inside the body of other living organism some of them have some of them possess structure that helps in locomotion locomotion means what movement locomotion is basically your movement so they have certain structures which helps in the movement of the organism so these structures are nothing but your flagella or cilia so this flagella or cilia are basically if you see this is a structure this one we call flagella right so this is what we call flagella and cilia are also hair-like projections. Cilia are also hair-like projections. Projections, right? Something like this. Clear? So that is what it basically helps in the movement. So coming to the characteristics of kingdom protista. Protista are usually aquatic that lives in water present in the soil or areas with moisture when wherever there is a moisture there are also you can see protista uh, organisms which belongs to the protista most protist species are unicellular organisms however there are few multicellular proteas but mainly they are mainly protista includes unicellular eukaryotic organisms but apart from this there are certain exceptions also multicellular Protist also it may also contain some multicellular organism like kelp. So kelp is basically a brown algae or you can call it seaweed. Brown algae or sea wheat. Right. So it is used commercially, it is used in making toothpaste and all. Right. So this is you can say kelp is one exceptional multicellular organisms which are used in which are under the protista kingdom. Right. So they are basically seaweeds found in the shallow oceans. Just like any other eukaryotes, the cells of this species have a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. As you know, they are eukaryotic organism. As they are eukaryotic, so they have a membrane-bound organelles and also they have a true nucleus. True nucleus means what? Nucleus is bounded by a nuclear membrane, right? They may be the mode of nutrition may be autotrophic or heterotrophic in nature. Autotrophic organisms basically make their own food, and heterotrophic organisms are dependent on other organisms for food. And this protein that they also show symbiotic relationships. See, symbiosis. Symbiosis means what? Both the organism gets benefited. If this is one organism, this is another organism, then the relationship is like both will be benefited. Both benefited both benefit in case of 
symbiosis symbiosis is observed in the members of this class for instance calcivi is a multicellular protist that provides otters protection that provides otters protection from predators amid its thick cap in turn otters eat sea urchins that tend to feed on cap so basically this is a mutualistic relationship where a sea weed is protecting the sea otters sea otters are basically organisms they are organisms this calf is protecting this otters from the predators or from their uh, you can say from those organisms which feeds the sea otters in turn what otters are giving to sea urchins otters eat sea urchins that tend to feed on calf clear so that is the mutualistic relationship they may also exist in a parasitism see parasitism is also observed in protists species such as trypanosoma protozoa can cause sleeping sickness in humans so this is a parasitism where one organism is benefited another is affected not benefited right so this parasitic is trypanosoma protozoa protists exhibit locomotion so they exhibit locomotion through cilia and flagella already i told you in the last slides apart from cilia and flagella some have pseudopodia pseudopodia meaning composed of two parts pseudo plus podia pseudo is basically false podia means food so they have sudden they have a pseudopodia that is false food which helps in the locomotion if possible i'll show you one diagram protists reproduces by asexual means so how they reproduce they reproduces by asexual mechanism the sexual method of reproduction is extremely rare and occurs only during the time of stress so they undergo sexual reproduction only when there is a stress so basically their mode of uh, reproduction is or asexual coming to classification of protists so protists are classified as amoeboid protozoans flagellated protozoans ciliated protozoans and sporozoans we'll see what is amoeboid protozoan so these are basically found in water bodies either fresh or saline saline is marine water they have pseudopodia that is false feet see false feet which helps to change their shape in capturing and engulfing food example amoeba like this you can see i'll show you what is pseudopodia this is amoeba so this type of we call it pseudopodia these are like false feet this we call it pseudopodia these are false feet coming to flagellated right flagellated protozoa as the name suggests the members of this group possess flagella so they will be having this is what we call flagella right flagellated protozoa coming to ciliated protozoa they have cilia all over their body so this may be like this they have cilia all over the body that means what which helps in the locomotion as well as in nutrition sporozoa these organisms are so called because their life cycle has a spore like stage means why we call it sporozoa because in their life cycle they form certain spores so what are spores if you see these are certain spores they are present right so they exist in sporous form in their life cycle they come to a stage where they exist in the form of spores so we call them sporozoans clear so these organisms basically we call them sporozoans because during their life stage during their entire life cycle they exist as spores the cycle has a spore like stage see this is what we call spore like stage you can see spore like stage right if you see the developmental of malaria causing parasite right they also exist in a spore form that's why we call them sporozoans plasmodium falciparum right so these are examples of certain uh, protos protista organisms coming to slime molds slime molds are saprophytic organisms so saprophytic organisms are those, those organisms that feeds on dead and decay right they these are tiny organism that have many nuclei multi nuclear are present usually slime molds are characterized by the presence of aggregates called plasmodium and are even visible to the naked eye so they are visible through naked eyes coming to the economic importance of protist protist are primarily source of food for many animals obviously they involve they occupy the uh, very basic level in the food chain protists are symbionts symbionts means both the organisms gets benefited some protists also produce oxygen and may be used to produce biofuel phytoplankton is one of the sole food sources for whales 
Seaweed is an algae. Phytoplankton, I told you, it is present in aquatic organisms. Like plant is a plant form the basic food chain. Similarly, phytoplankton in case of aquatic organisms form the primary source of food. Seaweed is an algae which is considered a plant-like protist. Zooplankton is fed on various sea creatures including shrimp and larval crabs. So, these are some of the economic importances of protist. Right? Uh, next, we will see some uh, diagrams of protist. Just give me uh, two minutes. So, these are the uh, images of slime molds. Uh, just these are images of what? These are images of your slime molds. Right? So, this is how slime molds look like. So, these are organisms which belongs to the kingdom protista. Uh, so this is the so we came to the end of the class. So if you have any doubts, please let me know. We will conduct a, a live class and we'll clear up your doubts. Thank you so much, students, for joining the session. Bye bye. Take care, everyone.